you are not able to join in online to have a live class. So I thought, let me record the working out of this fourth week uh, of this assignment one memo because I have marked now, so I've seen your, your errors. So I'm going to share my screen quickly. OK, so the first question was define velocity. So velocity is defined by saying it is the rate of change of displacement. Of displacement. So velocity is different from speed. Speed is when distance is changing, but Velocity is when displacement is changing. So when you say velocity is the rate of change of displacement, this is what you mean. Displacement changing over a period of time. Time there is the denominator. That is what you mean. So that one is time. It's a bit unclear. That is time. It's changing, changing displacement over changing time. Yeah. OK, and now question 1.2, they give you information. So the first thing you want to do there is write down your given information. They give you a mass of five tons. You need to convert it to kilograms. So one ton equals to a thousand kilograms. So this would have been 0.5 times a thousand, which is 500 kilograms. It is accelerated uniformly up and inclined of one is to 30. So when they give you that slope, one is the opposite side and 30 is the adjacent side. And this is the angle that they are looking for, that angle over there. So to get that angle, you will use tan theta equals to opposite over adjacent. Then theta here would have been second function, 10, one over 30 which gave us 1.909, 1.909 degrees. OK, and then it's traveling from rest, meaning U equals to zero meters per second to six, which is V is six meters per second. It does that during 15 seconds which means time is 15. Then the question is looking for acceleration. Okay. So to calculate acceleration, you will say V is U plus 80, and then make A subject of the formula. It's going to be V minus U over T, which is 6 minus 0 over 15, and that came as 0 0.4 meters per second squared. So this was a whole two marks, half, half there and half, half here. So it came to two marks. The distance traveled. To calculate the distance, you could use the formula S is V squared minus U squared over 2A. But the original formula S, uh, the original formula says V squared equals to U squared uh, plus 2AS. That's the original formula. Then from there, you make S subject of the formula. So V is 6, we square that. U is 0, we square that. And then A is 0 0.4. So with all that done, you came to 45 meters. So which is again two marks. If your SI units are not there or they are incorrect, they will deduct half a mark. Then question 1.2.3, they, they wanted work done by friction. So work done by friction will be frictional force times by the distance. The frictional force was given as 45. There's a frictional force. So it's 45 times by the distance of 45. And that gave us 2025 joules just for one mark. Okay. Then the next thing, they want work done by the gravitational component parallel to the plane. So the gravitational component parallel to the plane is Fs, and the formula to calculate Fs is W times by 
sine theta. Okay. So work done will be FS times by the angle. No, no, sorry, times by the distance. So the FS is W. In this case, W is 500 times 9.8 times by sine. That angle that we calculated, that side, 1.909 degrees. This whole thing multiplied by the distance of 45 meters. So this gave us 7345.334 joules. Then they ask for work done that is transformed into kinetic energy. That is work done by the unbalanced force or the acceleration force multiplied by the distance. The acceleration force is mass times acceleration, that whole thing multiplied by the distance. So the mass is 500 and the gravitational force is 9.8. No, 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 this is not a gravitational acceleration, it's a normal acceleration of 0 0.4. That multiplied by 45. So that whole thing gave us 500 times 0 0.4 times 45 gave us 9,000 joules. Okay. Then they asked for power exerted by the total applied force. Now, if we ask to sketch this, this is how it will look like. You've got this object on a slope. So it's got FC here, it's got FS there. It's moved upwards. The question was saying. It was accelerated up and incline, up and incline. So it means the applied force was moving upwards. So if the applied force is moving upwards like that, it means the frictional force is moving downwards, okay? So the unbalanced force or the acceleration force will be in this direction. So to get the acceleration force, you'll have to say upward forces minus downward forces. Okay, now this is the force that you want. If you make that force subject of the formula, so you leave it there and you bring these two to the side, they're gonna be positive. Okay. So that means to calculate the total force, so the applied force is also called the total force, you're gonna say the acceleration force plus the FS plus the frictional force. Because to calculate power, you're gonna say work done over time. But to get work done, you need the force because work done is force times distance. So let's start by the forces. The acceleration force we already, uh, okay, we will calculate it by saying MA, which is 500 times 0 0.4. The FS will be W sine theta, which is 500 times 9.8 times by sine. 1.909. Then the frictional force was given as was given as 45. Okay. So just the force alone is gonna be this 500 times 0 0.4. Put that in brackets plus open brackets 500 times 9.8 times by sine 1.909, close brackets, plus 45. So that whole thing equals to 408.22229, which is 230, okay? So this is just the force. Then work done is force times distance. So it's force, total force in this case. So this force times by 45, it gives me 1830,334. Then power is work done over time, which is this work done 
divide by the time of 15 seconds it took 15 seconds so this divide by 15 gives me one two two four point six eight nine watts that is power in watts and then question 1.3 okay here they give us the thickness so you see this thickness is in centimeters we need to bring it to meters zero comma four three five divide by 100 it gives us uh my calculator is giving me um okay it's gonna be zero comma zero zero four three five and then this is the diameter also in centimeters so the diameter is gonna be zero comma zero three nine is gonna be zero comma three nine five zero comma three nine five so the diameter is zero comma three nine five the thickness equal to zero comma zero zero four three five this is now in meters the tension on the slack side is 600 so that is t2 the tension ratio the four is to one that is the tension ratio so the first question says the belt speed in meters per second. So the formula says by DEM. So when thickness is given, you use effective diameter. Effective diameter equals to diameter plus thickness. OK. So the diameter is 0 0.395 plus the thickness 0 0.00435 times by n that is n 300 but it must now be revs per second so where one minute is we substitute 60 seconds so the final answer there would have been 6.273 meters per second then they want the tension on the tight side the formula says tension ratio equals to t1 over t2 so T1 equals to tension ratio times T2, which is 4 times 600, and that is 2400 newtons. Then question 1.4 says, a cannon with a mass of 10 tons fires a bullet with a mass of 50 kilograms horizontally. The velocity of the bullet when it leaves the barrel is 300. You must now remember this is after the trigger was pulled. Calculate the momentum before the bullet was fired. So before the bullet was fired, the, uh, the, uh, the cannon was standing still, as well as the bullet was standing inside the barrel, standing still. So that momentum is going to be zero because there's no movement there. You only get momentum. Momentum is kilogram meter per second. You only get momentum when you have velocity as well. Okay. I don't want the video to be too long, so I'm going to pause it here and do another one for the next question, for question two.